Hey everyone, Troy here, Swag Off Road. Today I want to take a few moments and discuss with you some of the features and benefits of our heavy duty 20 ton finger brake and our standard duty 20 ton finger brake with a can and can't do some of the features and benefits of both. As well as I want to talk to you about our flat top, a replacement bottom die assembly that can fit either the heavy duty or the standard duty brake that we sell. In addition, I want to show you our gooseneck and hemming die inserts and kind of show you and expand upon the possibilities that this brake will provide. We are using a Harbor Freight 20 ton press off the shelf. It's been modded a little bit. I'll go through that with you here in just a moment. Stay tuned. So as I mentioned before, this is an off the shelf Harbor Freight 20 ton press. On sale, it can be had for anywhere between 140 to 200 bucks. The few modifications that we've done to it. First off, we added the machine thumb knob so you can release the valve so you don't have to use a little T-handle they provide. We also installed the over hydraulic 20 ton bottle jack. Time's money, this sure speed things up, makes it a whole lot easier to manipulate the press. The other modification that we've done, normally there's a five inch long solid piece of rod welded directly beneath this bottle jack. We lopped that off and the reason why is we took this thing that was a floor standing unit we made it a bench top model. We don't need the five inch stud sticking down because it made this thing really tall and awkward to use. I lopped it down, it'll fit the brake, the arbor plates, the flat top, all of our inserts, really easy to access and easy to use. The other thing you're gonna notice on here is our arbor plates. Our arbor plates are inch and a half thick steel, machined on both sides, high def plasma cut to ensure flatness and smoothness, a great looking part, they weigh in at roughly 70 pounds, guaranteed you're not going to break them. In this video, I want to discuss, like I said, the differences between our heavy duty brake and our standard duty brake. Both these brakes are finger brakes. The only thing that differentiates the heavy duty versus the standard duty is the heavy duty is twice as wide, meaning it's four inch from point to point, and it's got three eighths thick bottom formed steel here on the bottom. The standard duty brake is half the width, so two inches wide, and it's got quarter inch on the bottom. Price point is negligible. Not too big of a price difference between the two. The major difference, you can bend twice as thick material given the same length versus that one. And the reason why is because that bottom die is wider, which makes bending easier. Point being, if you want to bend a business card in the heavy duty brake, you have to bend it widthwise to bridge the gap on the bottom die. On the standard duty brake, you can rotate that business card 90 degrees and it will land on the flat. What we tell most people, and the reason why this is by far the most popular unit we sell, take scrap pieces of angle iron, lay them in the bottom die. Here we got a piece of, this is a piece of three by three. We just laid in a piece of two by two. And we laid a piece of inch and a half by inch and a half. And now the bottom die is the exact same width as our standard duty brake. So you can always take the big guy and make it smaller. You can never take the smaller one and make it bigger. Again, this is why this is definitely the most popular. So I'm going to start out by showing you the bend radiuses of the heavy duty versus the standard duty. Another mod that I wanted to show you that I forgot is this set screw right here. We engage this set screw with that pin welded directly beneath the bottle jack. And what that does is when this top of die assembly goes up without the springs touching, so you get much more clearance. And what that's doing back there, it allows you to see the adjustable backstop. The adjustable backstop feature looks a whole lot just like this. You have two wing nuts on the bottom. You can loosen, slide this plate forward or backwards, lock them down. That way when you slide your material, the, your material is hitting this lip every time in the same position. It's the only way to do truly accurate, repeatable bending. So move that thing back a little bit, about like so. I'm going to be bending a piece, a four inch wide piece, of eighth inch, 6061 aluminum. The first piece we're gonna do is on our heavy duty 20 ton finger brake, just like so. I also have the angle cube. It'll get me real close to 90 degrees. So 
So again, if we're going for a 90 degree bend, I need this to say 45. Forty-four point six, forty-five point two five. So it'll be ninety and a half degrees. That right there is about a five-eighths bend radius. So now we're going to neck it down by installing, necking it down to a piece of inch and a half by inch and a half angle iron. Do the exact same procedure essentially turning the heavy-duty brake into our standard-duty brake. Forty-five point one. That's a three-eighths bend radius. This is a five-eighths bend radius. You can see the difference right there. Now I'm going to show you how to install and use the flat top assembly. We're going to take out our stacked pieces of angle iron, loosen this up, slide it out, When you purchase a flat top assembly, it comes with two extra springs. These springs are essentially a lift kit for the factory springs. because you lose height when you install the flat top. The flat top is this piece right here. High strength bottom steel die with two pieces of 3 8 top plate held together with four, five, sixteenths bolts. You loosen these four bolts and you can slide those adjuster plates in or out again to vary the bend radius. Install the top die assembly. Slider in position. Just like so. There's notches around the springs, so the flat top is always centered regardless of what you do. So now we're going to do the exact same thing with a flat top assembly, and you can see how tight of a bend radius you get with that. So now you can see three different pieces, three different band radiuses. A flat top really allows you to get tight, crisp, clean bends every time. Let me throw in a few more random pieces just to entertain you. What we have here is a three quarter inch wide piece of eighth inch flat bar. Again, the flat top is excellent for doing tabs and brackets. places where you need nice, clean, crisp bends. Just like that. Got a piece of four inch wide, three sixteenths. Not the best application for the flat top without me increasing the width of the bottom dies because the width of that bottom die is only three quarter inches wide. There's not much room for this material to go into for the top die. But let's give it a try anyhow. He doesn't like it at all. You can just tell it was fighting. You could see the machine not happy. Common sense applies. You got 20 tons, you can do a lot of damage. We'll take out the flat top. We'll bend it with the configuration of the stacked angle iron. That's where this thing wants to be and that's how we're gonna bend it. We could loosen this, these four bolts up, spread the bottom die, but we're gonna do it by just removing the flat top.
one thing I forgot to mention is that flat top, because you got those two top slider plates, obviously there's four sides to each plate. Some customers will come to us and say, hey, you know what? It's scratching the material. When we're using the flat top, because of that sharp edge, it's scratching the aluminum as it bends. You got four sides to play with. You could chamfer one edge, give it a nice smooth radius to prevent gulling and scratching on certain projects. If you're doing something you shouldn't, like God forbid you bend a rebar or something crazy like that, if you're going to go that route, you can put a sacrificial finger in the middle, stack any iron in the bottom die, and that rebar will obviously destroy the die, it'll also destroy your sacrificial piece of angle iron. But it can be done, you can bend solid round rod, just keep in mind whatever that rod touches, it will destroy. If you happen to bend one of the edges on the flat top, no big deal, you flip it around, make it work that way. Alright, so let's bend this thing the right way like we were supposed to the first time. You can just tell by how the machine is acting, how it's behaving. This is the proper way to bend a four inch wide piece of quarter inch. Now this first initial piece, that's what we tried doing in the flat top. That's why it has the goofy position. Bend up this, 3 16 six inch wide. No problem. Nice 90 degree bend right there. All right. Let's up the ante a little bit. We got a six inch wide piece of three eighths. You're not gonna wanna do that by necking it down. We'll open it up, stick it in there, center it out, stick it right about there. Apply pressure, give her what she has. And again, this over hydraulic jack is awesome. As you all can probably notice, we're on a plastic table. If I was doing this manually, absolutely the weight of me coming down, I would have crushed the table trying to jack this up. mad. So we're at 36. Forty. There you have it. Piece of three eighths, six inch wide, bent on the heavy duty 20 ton finger brake. Now I want to talk to you all about the difference between the finger brake and the non-finger brake. The top half is the only difference. The finger brake has five segmented fingers. They come in one inch, two inch, three inch, four inch, and nine and a half held in place by a chromoly clamping bar. The non-finger brake is this unit right here. A solid one-piece die where these guide tubes are welded directly to the top die. It's definitely a lesser expensive option, but you do lose out on a couple of key components. You lose out on the ability to form a shallow box or pan, something like you'd see right here. For example, the first bend's easy, you can do that with a solid top die. The second bend, no problem. You run into issues on the third bend. On the third bend, you need to have a finger that can drop in between the two legs you just previously bent. That is the main major advantage of the finger dies. 
Without them, you can't do a box. No way around it. The other bonus of the finger brake is we have two optional upgrades we currently offer. The gooseneck dies, which look like these. We sell them to you in four stacks. Six per stack, so you get a total of 24 per set. Those gooseneck dies can get welded by the end user, and they're half inch thick. So what we do here at the shop is we have one half inch, two one inch, three inch and a half, and so on, until you work your way up and consume all 24 fingers. That way we know we need to bend a piece that's one inch wide with the gooseneck dies, grab the piece that has two, one inch is wide. Where gooseneck dies are really handy, if you want to do something like this. Again, the first bend's easy. You can always do the first bend without issue. The problem lies with the second bend. This die will not come in there at a 45 degree angle like you need it to, to properly bend this piece of material. The gooseneck dies can. So you can see right there in the photo, if this was a straight section, the indentation would hit the straight leg. Gooseneck dies are just that. It kind of looks like a gooseneck or a swan neck. It's designed for tight, narrow channel, where a straight die would interfere with a piece of metal you're bending. Again, not going to happen. That's the only reason for the gooseneck dies. Tight, narrow channels, they sure are handy. The second feature we have is this, hemming dies. Hemming dies, simply put, fold material back on itself. Again, there's four stacks, so you get a total of eight inches on the top and eight inches on the bottom when you fully weld them together. Same thing, we have them in one, sets of two, sets of three, sets of four, and sets of five, and that consumes all 10 inches of fingers. The way you install these, you literally put this in the bottom die set like so, you'll knock out these teeth, clamp it in position, and bend your material. Now I'll give you a demonstration here in just a moment. But with the hemming dies, this is your first bend. You can bend thinner gauge material, almost works similar to the way of the flat top die assembly. You get really tight, crisp, narrow bends. That's the first bend, you'll take it out, smash it flat, and you'll end up with a piece just like this. So essentially that's the major advantage of the gooseneck finger dies. You can do shallow pans or boxes that you could not do with a straight solid die. Plus you can run the two other upgrades that we have, the gooseneck or the hemming dies. All right, with that said, right now I'm gonna walk you through operation on how to hem material using our hemming dies. First thing I'm gonna do is drop out the fingers. So what I've done here is I've stacked up a total of 12 pieces or six inches of hemming dies and I'm gonna bend this four inch wide piece of 16 gauge. Now these are all for the most part welded together but there's one individual straggler. It's hard to get them all lined up properly seated. Here's my technique. Four inch wide piece of 16 gauge. Let her rip. That's it. So now to hem the piece material, all we're gonna do is take these fingers out, take two arbor plates or two pieces of steel, or simply press this down using this stud in the factory location. Real simple, real fast. So again, hemming dies are simply for just that, hemming material back on itself. So to reiterate, there is a total of 16 of these, which gives you eight inches of hemming dies and 12 inches of gooseneck dies per kit. If you guys got any questions, be sure to check out the website, swagoffroad.com. We appreciate you watching the channel. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe.